Good morning. Bonjour. Que. Boche. 1970, a young indigenous student was raped by an official of the Department of Indian Affairs as she was being transferred to St. Michael's Residential School in Duck Lake, Saskatchewan. It is a horrific story from a horrific era and a horrific breach of trust. But instead of settling with the victim, the government of Justin Trudeau and Madame Carolyn Bennett have gone all the way to British Columbia Superior Court to deny justice to this victim of a sexual crime committed by a federal official. And no one in the government has contested in any way the facts of this terrible case. And yet they denied her justice on the grounds that she was raped on her way to the residential school and not in the property itself. I am here this morning to ask Carolyn Bennett why. Why would her government use such toxic legal tactics to deny compensation to a victim of sexual crimes by someone who worked in the Department of Indian Affairs? We remember in 2015 when Prime Minister Trudeau told Canadians that reconciliation with Indigenous people was his number one priority. And we remember the positive, positive words of Madame Carolyn Bennett that reconciliation for the survivors of residential school was going to be made real. But what we have seen time and time and time again is a government willing to use the endless resources of the Justice Department to wage a toxic legal war against the legal rights of survivors. Let's talk about the thousands of pages of police evidence regarding the crimes and tortures against children at St. Anne's Residential School that were suppressed, how the government sat on documents of serial sexual predators and then walked into cases, hearings in St. Anne's Residential School and had cases thrown out and told survivors they were not believable because the government refused to turn over evidence. Let's talk about the legal vendetta that they're still fighting against the survivors of St. Anne's and going after their legal representation. Let's talk about how they used the so-called administrative split to deny compensation to victims of physical and sexual abuse based on the specious argument that they were attacked in certain parts of the school but not others and therefore not eligible. We know the story of one child victim of sexual assault who was attacked in a school bus on the property of a residential school and the government argued that that child wasn't eligible for compensation. We remember how they told a survivor that he had to prove the sexual intent of a perpetrator who fondled him when he was eight years old. And they have argued in court that those who've had their de documents denied and the evidence hidden from them are not eligible for the same level of legal rights as other Canadians and are not entitled to, quote, procedural fairness. And in this latest horrific abuse attack, the government has argued that since the attack happened as the youth was being brought to the residential school, she's not eligible. They also argue that because the Department of Affairs, Indian Affairs official, wasn't directly employed by the residential school, they're not responsible. When I learned about the details of this case, I thought, how is it that you could not look on this and say the only decent, human, and just thing to do is to give this woman compensation? And that's not what the government decided. So I'm asking the government, after the Truth and Reconciliation, after the Murdered and Missing Women's Report, after Me Too, how is it that they can use the resources of the people of Canada to go after a survivor all the way through Superior Court to deny her justice for being a victim of a crime committed by a federal government official? I'm here this morning to demand justice for this survivor. I'm here to call on Madame Bennett to order her officials to end their toxic legal battle against the survivors who have trusted this government to do the right thing. Anything less is not acceptable. 